Welcome to the screencast introducing spectral factorization. The motivation for spectral factorization arises from the observation that most random processes with a continuous power spectral density can be generated as the output of a causal filter driven by white noise. If we further restrict our attention to random signals with a rational power spectral density, Walt's decomposition theorem states that every wide sense stationary signal can be written as the sum of two components, one deterministic and one stochastic. This description is often referred to as the innovation representation of a random signal. Another way to interpret Walt's decomposition theorem is that any wide sense stationary random signal Xn can be obtained by filtering an innovation sequence IN, which is zero mean white noise, by a synthesis or coloring filter. The inverse of this filter allows to transform the input signal in white noise, and it is called analysis or whitening filter. Spectral factorization is concerned with determining such innovation filter for different purposes. A first important application of spectral factorization is for data compression. Imagine you have a long audio signal XN composed of a billion samples and that you want to transmit this signal over a radio channel. At the receiver we denote X hat instead of X because the signal we receive will be corrupted by sources of noise and thus will not be exactly the same as the original signal. Considering that you need the 64 bit to store a single floating point number, the signal will be roughly 8 gigabits, which will need to be transmitted over the radio channel, possibly jamming the network. Suppose now that you are able to design a whitening filter by which you can filter the original signal and obtain white noise. And instead of transmitting the whole audio signal, you transmit the noise variance and the filter coefficients. Or better, you transmit the coefficients of the inverse of this filter, which is our innovation filter. At the receiver side, we would only need to synthesize a white noise sequence with given noise variance and filter it by the innovation filter to obtain an estimate of the original signal, which is equivalent to the original signal at least from a statistical point of view. If this filter requires, say, 100 coefficients, then we would only need 100 floating point numbers for the filter and one floating point number for the value of the input noise variance, and we will be able to replicate the original signal. Another important application of spectral factorization is optimal filtering. Exploiting the knowledge of the statistical properties of a random signal and assuming additive white noise, Wiener filters can be designed to filter noisy random signals and obtain an estimate of the original signal. However, this topic is out of the scope of this course, so we won't go any farther on this. A final important example is the use of spectral factorization as a parametric approach for spectral estimation. The idea behind this is that if we can describe a random signal as the output of an LTI driven by white noise, then we can obtain an estimate of the power spectral density by multiplying the input power spectral density, which is simply given by the variance of the input noise, by the squared magnitude response of the filter. More on this topic will be discussed in the module on spectral estimation. After having explained its motivation, we can pose the spectral factorization problem as the answer to the following question. If we know the second order statistics of a random signal, that is either its autocorrelation or the power spectral density, and we know that this signal, Y in this case, has been obtained as the output of an LTI driven by white noise, can we then determine the impulse response or equivalently the transfer function of the system and the variance of the input noise? The problem is that when we have the output power spectral density, we can only obtain the magnitude response of the system. We can in fact use the input-output relationships for LTI with random inputs to obtain the formula as in the slide. However, in general, there are multiple systems that have the same magnitude response, so this is not sufficient to uniquely identify our system. 
Suppose, for example, that you know the output power spectral density of a random signal Y and that the input is white noise and you want to determine the spectral factorization of this random signal. Well, if we have a system whose transfer function is given by 1 minus 1 over 2 e to the power of minus j theta by 0 mean white noise with input variance equal to 1, we obtain exactly the output power spectral density of y. However, the same output power spectral density is obtained by driving a system whose transfer function is given by 1 minus 2 e to the power of minus j theta by 0 mean white noise with input variance equal to 1 over 4. This example shows that the definition of H is not unique. We need an additional constraint. And this additional constraint is that the system must be minimum phase. So spectral factorization can be stated as the search for a minimum phase system given its magnitude response of from its autocorrelation. More formally, the spectral factorization theorem states that if the power spectral density of a random signal is rational, then it can be factored as the product of the input noise variance by L of z by L of z to the power of minus 1, where L of z is the innovation filter, and this filter is causal, stable, and minimum phase. This means that all poles and zeros are within the unit circle. Moreover, to avoid any ambiguity due to possible different gains, we choose the variance of the input noise such that the first filter coefficient is equal to 1. This concludes the screencast in which we introduce spectral factorization and we provided its formal definition. Thank you for listening.